to say 10 o'clock? Join the circle, yes. <laughs> We don't know if the panties are going to be here. Don't be shy. You all know each other. You can sit next to each other. <laughs> So, happy uh, Labor Day Sunday. I guess it's the informal end of summer, but we still have three more Sundays of summer yet, so enjoy them. Um, we are glad that you are here, and uh, everyone is welcome, of course. Everyone is welcome to the table. We exclude no one. We, don't, we know that many of you are on different parts of your faith journey, and that's okay. Wherever you may be, you are welcomed here. You are surrounded with love and grace. And as we love to say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Our prayer families this week are Andrew and Joanne Scott and Deborah Scott. And um, our prayer churches are Hillcrest Congregational UCC in Pleasant Hill and St. John's Presbyterian Church in San Francisco. I know that Pat wants me to remind you that if you like coffee, if you like treats, there's a calendar over there. Please sign up. If, look for an open Sunday. We'd love to have you share. Are there any other announcements that need to be shared? And just to, and just to piggyback off of that, um, yeah, thank you guys for those who have signed up. Thank you so, so much for doing so and just you know, sharing what you have, and we definitely need more sign-ups for sure, so I just want to say thank you to all of you for that. Thank you, Donald. Are there any other? Yes, Sherry. Just a quick announcement, the Kids for Jesus and Sushi Festival is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday downtown Pittsburgh, uh, right on the main road on railroad, and the Pittsburgh Women's Club will be having a booth in front of the California Theater, and we're raising money by selling popcorn. So if you come to the festival and have fun, to support our group, we're a philanthropic group, our money all goes back into the community. Right. 
Thank you. Any other announcements? And a quick reminder that next Saturday also is Janice Campbell's memorial service at noon in here. So, um, huh? On Zoom, yes, thank you. Uh, so our, we'll have Elaine send out contact information or, yeah, okay, great. Um, so uh, take a break from the Seafood Festival and come celebrate Janice's life and support her family. Our birthday celebrants this week are Joe Zamora today and Donna Henry on September 3rd, Elaine Grothman and Madeline Hansen on September 4th, Evelyn Arms and Debbie Johnson on September 6th, and we have happy anniversary to Michael Miller and Catherine Burles on September 1st. I hope Catherine is better. She uh, contracted COVID, so we hope that for their anniversary she will be well. And Keith and Nancy Wheeler on September 2nd, and Rich and Sue Ferguson on September 4th, and Joan and Ken Schmidt on September 6th. I guess we get to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Go Clarice. Okay. <laughs> for a complete change of pace, we have a moment for a Suicide Awareness Month. September is Suicide Awareness Month. The theme for 2024 is Connect to Protect. This theme underscores the importance of connecting with people we trust because individuals who have strong, supportive relationships have a lower risk for suicide. The importance of Suicide Awareness Month is to shift public perception, spread hope, and share vital information to people affected by suicide. This goal is to ensure that individuals, friends, and families have access to the resources they need to discuss suicide prevention and to seek help. And I believe there's a, a link to a website with these topics in your bulletins. A while ago, I went to a suicide kind of workshop, a suicide awareness workshop, and one of the things they said that really struck me was that it's best not to ever refer to somebody committing suicide because it, it makes it sound like the old mortal sin idea, but to say instead the person died by suicide or attempted it. So I've tried to live by that and I feel good about it. <laughs> so, um, and then lastly, and maybe most importantly, remember the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline phone number, which is 988. 988. I hadn't known that. So, thank you. And once again, I ask that you join me in reading our land acknowledgement that we share each week. We share this land acknowledgement, our formal statement, and public recognition of the indigenous peoples in this country who have been dispossessed. We acknowledge that all of today's structures are built on indigenous peoples' ancestral homelands. This is not about placing blame, it is the first step toward building a more inclusive future where we, we eliminate the ongoing erasure of, of indigenous people's voices, lives, and history. Our statement provides an opportunity to seed the path for learning and for respect to blossom and grow. Good morning, church. All right, so before I start reading the ancestors and African libation that I usually, that is usually read, um, I would say in honor of Suicide Awareness Month, um, 
I ask that you guys send a good thought to anyone that you know personally or anyone that we have known personally to remember the good thoughts about those people. With this libation, we share a moment to remember and call out those ancestors who have gone before us, who paved the way for us, who inspire us to stand for those who will follow us. Grant them eternal peace, O oh God, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May we learn to live in peace so that the souls of the faithful departed through your mercy may rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Ashe. Please rise in body or spirit for the call to worship. Welcome, beloved of God, for truly you are deeply, wonderfully, beautifully loved by the God of all creation. Come, let us worship God who loves us. Whether your week was filled with mountain high joys or valley low sorrows, peace like a gently flowing river or stress like a stormy gale, this is the time to rise and come away to worship God, who sustains and tends to you. Come, let us worship God, who loves us and tends to us. In a world that pulls us this way and that, God's love is our true north, guiding us with uncommon wisdom through all that life brings us. Come, let us worship God, who loves us and guides us. Beloved, the time for singing has come because God's love, care, and wisdom sustain and guide us wherever we go. Come, let us worship and sing to the God who loves, tends, guides, and sustains us. We're now going to sing hymn number 32.
us join together in a unison prayer. Creating God, you are the source of nature's splendor, the beauty and fragrance of delicate flowers, then sweet sound of bird song. We come to you this morning with delight and gladness, grateful for all of your wonders. As the fields produce their harvest, may your love grow within us that we too may produce a harvest of love, hope, and joy. Amen. Please be seated. It is time for the peace candle. Having lit our peace candle, let us pray. God, let us sow peace and not promote war. Let us reconcile and not contribute to divisions among peoples, groups, and nations. Renew our hearts and hands with your love and compassion. Help us not just to talk about peace, but to use all our power to work for peace. Let your peace return to our families, in our churches, and in our world. Make us instruments of your peace wherever we are and whatever we do. Amen. Amen. The singing bowl. <laughs> A good time to pray or meditate or think. I'm not very good at this, but <laughs> the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. my soul and bless God's holy name bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life bless the Lord my soul
Now is our opportunity to share our prayers of concern and joy. And as always, we will start with our folks on Zoom. We have uh, three that I can see on Zoom today. Briandi Brandon, Rose Solarzano, and Tom Cundiff. Do any of you have prayers today? I don't see any, but prayers to everyone who's at home. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Are there any prayers in our group? Elaine. Oh, you got it. Well, <laughs> uh, just to remember uh, Letha Arms and her family and the loss of her brother, Daryl, who passed away a week ago. Lord, in your mercy. Any other? Here's prayers for uh, Monty Panawaka and his family as Monty is going through some health challenges. Lord, in your mercy. I'll go first to Jean. I have three things. I was in communication with Carol Hosmer, and she's making good progress and thinks she might be out soon, uh, around and about. And then two prayers. My sister Linda was in the hospital, and now she's been sent to rehab. So prayers for her recovery. And for me, I have a fungal ear infection, and I've been to the doctor once, and I see him again on Tuesday, so prayers for a good recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Our family has been blessed. I have a grandson who's 21, and he is diagnosed being on the spectrum. He has this wonderful opportunity to go to college with other young people who are neurodiverse thinkers. He has made a friend, a real friend, with skin and bones. <laughs> it is a joy to see him smile when we see him on camera. Thank you, thank you, God. Yeah. Lord, in our joys. Yes, that's all. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be worshiping with you this morning. I pray that God renew, restore, and fill us with his spirit in his house this morning. God bless you all. Thank you. Lord, in our blessings. I have a couple things. First of all, our son Jeremy is back in Philadelphia today at a big concert. He was at SoFi Stadium yesterday. Uh, he plays for El Defarge, and he's a 80s and 90s a famous writer and singer. Hmm. And so uh, he's back there in enjoying that experience. Um, Karen, do you want to talk about your friend Jan? Yes, I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> My friend uh, Jan is on hospice, and I think she wants to go because she's refusing water and stuff. And it's just so sad to see her in that condition, and I, I pray for a peaceful passing in God's good time. Um, we're accepting miracles. And um, I wanted to say about, um, it has something to do with what, um, what our friend Zelda said. Um, today is the International Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation. And uh, it's something that started in the Eastern Orthodox Church and moved to the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. So September 1st, the very day, and I think of the uh, climate activist Greta Thunberg, who's on the... Um, on the spectrum also and, and just <laughs> has done so much for our earth. And I wanted to give thanks for our church family. It's a wonderful place to be here, whether you're in a bad mood or good. It's just a great place to be, and I'm grateful <laughs> for you all. <laughs> so, Lord, in, your, in our blessings and in your mercy, is anyone else out here? Yes. Our grandchild in Philadelphia was due yesterday, 
So we're hoping uh, he, she makes her appearance soon. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> and I uh, just pray for a safe delivery and a happy baby. Wow. I'm going to say, we're going to say that's a blessing. Lord in our blessings. Prayers for Bill and Barbara. Barbara is in um, Oregon, and Bill's at home with his daughter, being Havis, so. Behaving himself. <laughs> Lord in your mercy. Anybody else out here? Oh. Good morning to you all. There are three major wars raging in the world around us today. And for the proponents and the opponents and the people that are affected, let's say a prayer together. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy, we hear our prayers. Especially for peace. Jane, go ahead. Donald gave me cuts in line before he <laughs> okay. does his thing. I just, I just wanted to say it's kind of explained in the newsletter, but if you haven't yet read it, because it just came out. Um, when I was scrolling through emails, as we all do, uh, um, I found one that kind of gave me that gut punch, so it meant I knew I had to do it, because <laughs> um, I always take that nudge from, is from above. So I signed my name on the dotted line and sent it to them. It's this group called Daily Cause, and it's simply for the purpose of sending 500 postcards <laughs> um, to... Uh, the swing states have been covered, but what is remaining is Florida, Texas, Ohio, and some house districts. So I will be, I pray I will be receiving it. Assuming that I receive this package of postcards, there are about four, three or four specifics of what you can write on these postcards. If you feel called to bring a few stamps with you, that's fine. Otherwise, we've got the stamps covered. And how much are postcard stamps, Jane? 56 cents. Okay. So do the math. Yeah, I know. Paul had something to say about that. <laughs> he said, Jamie. <laughs> anyway, um, so at some point when they arrive, I'm going to invite people to our house, and I'm going to invite people to uh, our social hall. And if anyone wants to invite people to their house, just let me know and I'll show up. If you are so called or led to um, fill in some of those postcards, they have to be mailed by mid-October. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Donald, I think you're up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yesterday I went to, I was on my way to perform with the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir and uh, I was on BART, and there was a train track that was on fire. Whoa. Yeah. And so they were luckily able to get it out, and thank goodness that no one was hurt, and even me. Um, but including the people on the train. Um, and also coming back, I witnessed two people attacked by officers and arrested, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I also want to pray for, can please continue to pray for my friend and roommate Chris that um, a miracle will happen in some capacity and that, um, you know, when his sentencing come, there'll be a little bit of mercy and grace on part of the justice system and um but on a good note since i know i was reminded that this month is national uh, suicide awareness month um i've been in correspondence with nami and i will be doing a training one weekend for a class that i will be teaching called peer-to-peer -peer, which is a class teaching others about mental health, suicide prevention, and all that stuff. So, um, and it will be stipend. So I'm excited about that. So, yeah. Lord, in your mercy and in our hopes. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you are present in our lives, that your strength, your comfort, your peace surround us. 
that we can look around and see your provincial gifts for all of us, help it, providential gifts for all of us, help us to use those gifts well, help us to use them wisely, help us to celebrate in the creation that you have made, and let us use those gifts not only for our own benefit, but for all of our siblings throughout the world, wherever they may be. We trust, too, that you hear our prayers, that as we lift up the names of people about whom we care, as we lift up those concerns that are in our lives, we know that you hear them. We know that you heal the sick, that you comfort the mourner, that you bring wisdom to the, ser- to the seeker, Continue to guide us and keep us helpful in that trust. And as we pray, we also lift up those that we have held in the quiet of our hearts as we pray together in silence. O God of calling, may your spirit blow through our lives and guide us. Help us to know where you are calling us. Help us to be your faithful people in the world, to follow your wisdom, and to be bound together by love and grace through Christ. Help us to also be bound together in our prayers as we pray what we have been taught. Our Father, Mother, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 1, 2, 6 through 9. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of our ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them and perform them, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourself closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen or let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, and we are in chapter 7, and I have various verses I'm going to add a couple uh, to the lectionary because I think they're important verses. So let us listen. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you, you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their lips are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that by going in can defile, but things that come out are what defile since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes into the sewer. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said it's what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is a word of God. All creation is a word of God. I think at times we humans see this as a world of chaos, and especially when we consider uh, great climatic events like hurricanes and floods and droughts and wildfires and even winter storms. And we all want to bring them somehow under control. But the interesting thing is that the more we learn, and something that many primal cultures already knew, is that very often the things that we consider chaotic are actually a part of the life cycle of an ecosystem that has adapted to them. For instance, hurricanes clean out mangrove swamps and other wetlands. Floods fertilize the floodplain so that they can be fecund. And as we know, wildfires will clear out the underbrush in a forest, and the heat from the fire is needed for some seeds to germinate. And as we know in California, if you have a winter storm, that builds up our water supply for the coming 
dry season. I think the chaos often happens when we humans try to impose our order on the orderliness of the, of the creation. You know, what do you expect? If you're going to build on a floodplain, floods are going to destroy your construction. If you build in a, in a fire uh, a storm area, fires are going to destroy what you build. And if you destroy wetlands, hurricanes can be worse, and so on and so forth. All that being said, though, is that order is not always a bad thing. Order can make our lives simpler. They can make them safer. And they can help us be more civilized to one another. And for those of us who are Presbyterian and grew up Presbyterian, order is our middle name. (laughs) For Presbyterians believe what Paul wrote when he said, Do everything decently and in order. We went so far as to build a book of order. So when you go to a presbytery meeting, like I did recently a couple weeks ago, we do everything according to the book of order and Robert's rules of order. Got it? So when uh, we met there was an issue, a motion that was coming before the assembly that was something that felt would excite a lot of passion and ardor. And, of course, that was about money and property. Now, I've never had the privilege of going to a a UCC uh, conference meeting, so I don't know if you all have the same passion about the same things. But whenever a motion comes before a presbytery, that could potentially be controversial. Actually, it's all motions. But when a speaker from the floor addresses the assembly, they actually have to talk to the moderator. Because the idea here is that the speaker is talking to the moderator about the content of the motion. It it ideally prevents personal issues and attacks and uh, uh, rhetoric to stir up the assembly not to happen. So as this motion was being discussed, one speaker came up and began to speak and kept turning to the assembly. (laughs) Now, I uh, was not certain if I was allowed to speak because uh, the Presbytery of San Francisco doesn't uh, formally formally, uh, seat corresponding members. So I don't know if I had the privilege of the floor. Because immediately, the first time he turned around and the moderator did not correct him, I wanted to call a point of order. (laughs) Eventually, somebody did call that point of order, and the speaker, realizing they had lost their platform, sat down. See, order's good sometimes. (laughs) Now, those of us who use the Roberts Rules of Order in religious... uh, groups and those who have their own rules for order, we come by it honestly. Because the Torah, those first five books of the Hebrew Bible, they are the first book of order. Now sometimes we Christians treat them polemically by calling them the law. That's partly Paul's fault. But um, really what they are is to be seen as something to bring order in relationship to God and in social relationships with each other. The book even begins with the first creation story, which is about God ordering the universe, which I think is proof positive that God is Presbyterian. (laughs) The UCC folks can have their chance to come back. (laughs) But you get it. There, we begin with the ordering the universe. We have those origin stories. We have the history of, of the Exodus. We have all those ordinances and statutes. And when we begin to read them within the context of what it is as a gift that God gave a particular group of people, we begin to realize that, that God has passionate love for these people, even though they can be stiff-necked at times. He gave those, God gave those ordinances and statutes 
in order to show the people how they could love God back and how they could love one another. So we begin to understand why the, the writer of Deuteronomy, that second edition of all those statutes and ordinances, um, says that they should not be amended or excised. Because how do you keep the love flowing if we obfuscate the instructions of the Torah? So I think what the the writer of, of Deuteronomy is pointing out is that b boundaries for order are appropriate. And especially as we hear in the Torah time and time again, that those boundaries that are set up are set up to protect the vulnerable, the widow, the orphans, and the immigrant from those mechanizations of the rich and powerful. <clears throat> boundaries become bad when they reverse that and are used to protect the powerful and rich for their privilege and for excluding others. So I think it was that use of bad boundaries that Jesus is really protesting in what we hear from the passage in the Gospel of Mark. As we hear, is it, the Gospel writer describes a second confrontation in the Gospel between Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes. And the scribes and Pharisees have observed behavior from Jesus' disciples, some of them, in not washing their hands. And so as the, the writer of the gospel tells us, they come out of their understanding of tradition, not the Torah. And it is the Pharisees then who are adding to the, con the ordinances and statutes. And they're not washing their hands for hygienic purposes. They're washing their hands because they want to declare themselves free of impurity, obtained from the market, obtained from the preparation of the food, and obtained even from the other people at the table. What Jesus points out is that they are adhering to human connection, not God-given connection. And the human condition is what Jesus says is what separates us from others. So that the washing at the table becomes exclusion. And so Jesus rightly protests that these are additions to the Torah and they are obscuring the love and the that is given in the ordinances and statutes. And he asks the people around them to ask themselves if you are setting up bad boundaries to exclude others. And I think we have to take that instruction of Jesus to heart, pun intended, because what Jesus is saying is that the heart is the instrument that really defiles us, that makes us impure. What our heart does is important. In his understanding, in first century Israel, is the heart is the center of moral well-being. So what comes out matters. And if the heart is corrupt, no matter how pious you may be, you will use those borders or boundaries for order to protect the corruption. So as I say, we must take that to heart. We have to ask ourselves, what kind of boundaries for order have we set up? Are we using boundaries to protect the vulnerable? Or are we using boundaries to exclude others and protect privilege? Unfortunately, the church has sometimes corruptly bound or, um, created corrupt boundaries. There are biblical proofs all through the 17th and 19th centuries in the U.S. that justify keeping people of color as slaves. As we read each weekly about our land acknowledgement, we know that biblical proofs were used to, def to demonize indigenous people and tear them away from their culture. 
We know that biblical proofs have been used for centuries to subordinate women. So we have to ask ourselves, as, as people of faith, how are we using our boundaries for order? <clears throat> we are asked by Jesus to examine that and to wonder about that. Are our boundaries for order to exclude and protect privilege, or are we understanding how we can include others through those boundaries we create? And the reason I wanted to include that 19th verse in the reading from the Gospel of Mark is because Jesus said, or the Gospel writer says something that's mind blowing in the first century. He said, Thus Jesus declared all foods clean. Did you catch that? All foods clean. Because he knew that the Pharisees were using their washing as a way of excluding others. In Jesus' understanding of the kingdom of God, it is acknowledging that everyone is a child of God and that all should be invited to the table. That there is no one to be excluded. That our boundaries of order should only be used to promote love. Amen. Each of us is a fragile miracle, evidence of God's creative hands, amazing grace. We are each unique, unrepeatable gifts to the world. We are proof of God's love. And so we who <coughs> are the gifts of creation now give gifts to our creator, gifts brought in love. Please bring your gifts forward to the offering. Dory, if you prefer online or mail-in giving, instructions are provided in the announcements and e-blasts. May God add blessings to all we do and all we give and all we receive. and loving God, the giver of all things, we thank you that we are able to come to you in joy and celebration. We offer ourselves and all that we have to you, knowing that all of what we have comes from you. Bless these offerings that they may be used to enlarge your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Gentile or Jew, or free, woman or man, no more, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, Here is the table of Christ. We are gathered to Christ's supper. A foretaste of things eternal. Come when you are fearful to be made new in love. Come when you are doubtful to be made strong in faith. Come when you are regretful and be made whole. Come old and young, there is room for all. On the night of his arrest, our Lord took the bread after the meal. And he said to his disciples, This is my body which is given for you. Whenever I break it, or whenever you eat it, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal, and after giving thanks to God, he poured it out. And said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this remembering me. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us receive what has been prepared for us. And we will serve you. I invite you to hold your elements and we will partake them together. And remember, you are all invited. No one is to be excluded. For the order of that we want to establish is the order of love. Amen.
excluded somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. This is the bread of life for all who hunger. This is the com- excuse me. This is the cup of redemption for all who need love. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are a generous God. You give us so freely of yourself. You give us the cup. You give us the bread so that we may know that you are present in the world. Help us to be present in the world with you, bringing your love and grace through Christ. And let the people of God say, Amen. Please join me. We affirm that we are part of a wonderful, mysterious universe, that all life is interrelated in one vast web, that our role lies in nurturing all life and the planet itself, that human beings are genetically one family and of equal value and that that every every human human being being has the right to the basic necessities of life, that each of us is on an evolving spiritual journey, and that we are called to work to to create a world of justice justice and and peace, peace, compassion and respect.
Boy, I couldn't say it better than that. Thank you. Friends, go into the world and know that we are called into order to love and that that love brings us together in order to be God's people and children. Let us go with that trust. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.